All right, in this video, we're going to talk about why the additional documents in the Copa v. Wright trial are significant and something you should be paying close attention to. All right, so for those who are, you know, been sheltered by the mainstream news and not, you know, the lack of reporting on the, the most important trial of our time, there's this giant court case that's happening starting in next month. Uh, February 5th is like they're going to start calling witnesses. It's going to be in London and the Copa, it's called Copa versus Wright. Now, uh, this case is, is monumental for a number of reasons. And ultimately, you know, the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, will be determined at the outcome, at the outcome of this case. And some significant, why should you even care about that? Okay, why is that even relevant? Well, a number of reasons. One, if you're a person holding BTC, you should be mindful that there's risk to the holding of BTC based upon this trial. If you're a person holding another uh, a split of Bitcoin or the original Bitcoin protocol, BSV, you may be a person like thinking, oh, there could be opportunity here. You know, what's the outcome going to be? Or you could be just a person rooting for humanity and like liberation, because that's what ultimately what Bitcoin does is it is it cr takes away power by uh, making things transparent on a public ledger that no one can ever, uh, you know, hide from ever again. While things are maybe private, courts can still enforce things on Bitcoin. You know, that's uh, that precedent's hopefully being set here in another case. But let's talk about this uh, this particular case right now and why why these additional documents are important. All right, so first of all, like what happened was there's a BDO drive and a LaTeX file that are now important digital files that have been accepted by the court that are going to be reviewed. Now, these are... Uh, these are complicated uh, data sets and see if I can explain this properly. Yeah, so Zem Gal points out that basically they are, they're gonna be easier to establish their identity uh, with these particular types of files, the identity of the creator of Bitcoin. And, and so uh, according to Dr. Wright's own admissions, he, and this, this actually went wild on the internet, so it's something that's gotten out there. People are taking, been way, taking away out of context. What he admitted to in in the uh, documents are that he stated that the in his six witness statement he stated the following quote the identity issue cannot fairly be determined with those documents being before the court therefore I asked the court to adjourn and the trial give and give revised directions to the adjournment trial as set forth in the application so he's stating that the documents that were there before he didn't feel were strong enough to prove the entire case. So he's pleading with, he pled with the court, his attorney did to plead with the court to get this additional evidence in and it was accepted. This is very, very significant. So why is it so significant? What's up with these files? So basically um, the BDO file, it's an image of a, of a drive used in 2004 to 2009. And accordingly to the, to the record and what, what his attorney is claiming, it's uh, it's, it's going to be a lot harder to, it would be a lot harder to forge by like a forensic expert when they review these, this BDO file, it's going to be a lot easier to authenticate and to prove it'd be a lot harder for Copa to prove that this is a forged document or forged file. Now, I think even more so important is the, is the latex file. Now the latex file, the way, um, the way the significance of it. Okay. Basically what Zim talks about in his article and what the, the judgment it talked about is basically the latex file is, it would be incredibly hard to reverse engineer the way the file and the latex file is something that the white paper was claimed to be of written in. It's a special type of format, uh, formatting that it, yeah, it's come to light that the PDF, the white paper was written in was you, they use this type of latex file format to write it. So by Dr. Wright now getting it into evidence, this latex file format, the court once and for all will get to determine, huh, was this, was this the, the file format that the, the white paper was written on? Okay, and it's gonna be incredibly hard to reverse engineer a forgery with this type of a latex file. That's what according to, that's what according to what Zem is saying. I, I, I don't, couldn't comment on that at all, whether, whether that's true or not, I don't know. It'll be for the court to decide. But that's according to what Zem's stating here that it would be, it's a very difficult mathematical equation, rendering the most challenging to, um, to make it a forgery or re-engineer re it. So if it is in fact that the Bitcoin white paper was written on this latex file and it gets into evidence, then betting against Dr. Wright would be highly, 
I mean, it would be uh, highly un, unfavorable to bet against him at that point. Uh, because most of the crypto world, the people who are into crypto, uh, right? So they, they believe that Dr. Wright is not Satoshi because what they, what, you know, what people do is they just read the highlights. They say, oh, it's the most important. It's the highest price thing. It must be real. Of course, it's the Bitcoin. It says Bitcoin on it, right? It's the highest price thing. So, so the crypto world thinks he's not Satoshi. But this right here, if this gets in, and, and that's according to where the white paper was written on, we'll find out in testimony here very soon, that um, it's going to be hard to bet against him. It's going to be very hard. My prediction that I made on the video with uh, Brett is that he will lose at the trial level. Now, don't, so, so that's just my prediction, all right? I've been enough battles that that's just where I, I think it's going to go. Now, um, I don't think, I think that he's got the evidence to win, okay, but it will probably go back on appeal. That's just my prediction, and we'll see what, what happens. It will go back on appeal, and then it will be proven uh, victorious on the appeal. Now, Really, the key is we, you know, like Zem points out, we really shouldn't be uh, uh, prejudging anything and just wait for the trial outcome to see what happens. But it's good to be informed on this. It's a very, very significant monumental time. Now, this is just speculation. Uh, there's no confirmation about this part here yet. But according to some hearsay documents that have been floating around, the COPA side is going to immediately depose Wright as their first witness. I'd like to confirm that. So, uh, I don't have any confirmation. That's just total, total speculation and hearsay. But that's what I've been told. And if, uh, if that's so, that'll be very interesting that they're not bringing in a witness. They're going right after Wright himself, Dr. Wright himself as their first potential witness. So that'll be a, a very unorthodox move if that's, if that's the case. So let's watch for that and see if we can confirm if that's their strategy. And if it is... Um, yeah, you know, let's I think that thing through. I mean, ultimately, they're going to try to get him to per, they would be trying to get him to, to perjure himself and what would be called to discredit him, to impeach his own testimony. You know, did you forge this document? Did you send in this forgery? Did you send in this false information? Uh, is that your signature? You know, these types of questions to try to make, to impeach the credibility. It's going to be a, uh, if that's their strategy, it's going to be like a super hot, well, if it were if it were the U.S., I'm not sure if this is how it will play out there. But if it was, uh, if it were here, California-wise, it's going to be a super stressful, hostile attorney situation where they're trying to get the witness agitated and asking questions. Right, writes a writes a lawyer, man. He's a freaking doctorate in law. He knows the freaking law inside and out, so he knows uh, objections and he knows. So it's a matter of can he sit on the stand and wait not to answer. Uh, really that's the best thing to do is wait, be slow, take your time, take a deep breath, really think about what the question is and then answer, you know, it's not a regular conversation. Oh yeah. You know, back and forth. It's like, they're asking you something under oath. You got to really think, what's he asking me? How do I answer this question? You know, what's, so that's really the best approach. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But ultimately, on this uh, this new evidence it is, you know, it looks like it's incredibly much more significant than I originally thought, according to what Zem's writing here. I mean, the, the reverse engineering of the latex file is going to be next to impossible. It looks like so. If that's in. That's basically in evidence now, and that's probably why they may be bringing right on the witness stand first. The BDO file as well is also in. I mean, what I mean it's in is they're bringing him in, so they're going to try to they're going to try to discredit it. But rights attorneys are going to try to authenticate it and say. Did you uh, write this white paper on this late using this latex file format? He's going to answer yes. You know the other side's going to going to have uh, counter objections and cross examination. You know it's freaking it's like Perry Mason on steroids like times a thousand. I mean this is like this needs to be broadcasted on screens throughout the world. I mean this is going to be like really really amazing entertainment. For anyone who likes drama, if you ever like watch the old Perry Mason movie uh, show back in the 60s, I mean, this is it times like times a thousand. So be sure to subscribe to this video. I got a lot more to come. Some freaking really cool interviews coming. James, I'm working on James Belding with uh, Tokenized. I've got Shanna Rhodes next week on Wednesday. I'm going to be in court on Friday myself, arguing in front of the appellate division in uh, up in Sacramento, where we're going to freaking just get in front of the court and, and see what it's like. And so I'm really excited about that. I wish I could broadcast it, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, so I'm not doing any, any interviews on Friday, but um, definitely on Wednesday. And then I've got some more just incredible stuff planned ahead. So be sure to subscribe. More to come. This is Gavin Mail. And uh, share this video. Get the word out there about this upcoming major trial.
See you at the top.